Christian by the name of Yux, who is currently residing in Chengdu in southwest of China. He specializes in combining traditional Chinese instruments, such as the guzheng with Western electronic music. During this year's Dragon Ball Festival, he created a dulcet melody called Paradise, especially for our show. He also shared with us that he believes the way to preserve the past is to blend in with the new, and that's exactly what he's doing. Hello, I'm called Yukes. Uh, I'm an independent video producer and musician living here in Chengdu, China. I mainly focus on combining traditional Chinese instruments with all sorts of Western contemporary electronic music production. So my music fits pretty neatly in a category called China Wave, Zhong Guofeng. And it's all about the contemporary use of traditional Chinese elements, whether it's the instruments themselves or the culture. The first time I started combining guzheng with sort of electronic components, it really was just kind of like a geeky fascination because electronic music was something I, I wanted to learn. I, I only picked up a few years ago and it was just because the technology itself is so cool. The buttons are glowing, there's knobs and sliders and all that. It was just kind of out of curiosity and I was already learning these traditional instruments so I thought it'd be just kind of fun to try and do them at the same time. Then I started to realize like well this is kind of an important thing to explore because not too many people are doing it. You know, a lot of people say combining East and West, but it really is just combining traditional instruments with a more contemporary style of making music. I'm starting to think it's a really important step in the development of uh, traditional and contemporary Chinese music. It's all an experiment and, and just learning a little bit more every day. Before I got to China, I was already on a, a long adventure of trying different instruments, lots of niche American folk instruments and instruments from all around the world. And then when I got to China, I figured it would probably be my best bet at kind of engaging the, the culture of the, you know, of the country I'm living in. To be honest, I didn't really get into the Chinese instruments for the sake of learning the culture. I kind of came at it from a place of just kind of curiosity and interest. I mean, the first time I saw a guzheng, I just saw this beautiful zither, you know, like a lap harp, right? It was just so fun to play, and it was so fun to have a try. And uh, after that, I just I just got as many different local instruments as I could afford. You know, so again, it wasn't necessarily a means of learning the traditional way. It was just from a place of curiosity and fascination with any uh, musical instruments. Ever since I started working in the sphere of guzheng, and traditional instruments, I've started to work with several guzheng companies, and I've gotten a really interesting outsider's look at the industry that is traditional Chinese instruments and uh, cultural preservation, uh, as well as that intangible cultural heritage and, and all that. The most pressing matter I've seen is this sort of conflict between preservationism and innovation. China, as a, as a cultural heritage, is really good at preservation and keeping its ancient culture alive and thriving. But there's also a great need for some form of innovation by its musicians, by its people. And in the world of traditional Chinese instruments, it makes sense that there's a big, you know, butting heads between the ideas of the old and the, and the new. If you focus too much on innovation, then it's easy to lose the, the past. But if you focus too much on the past, you're stunting the growth of innovation. So with regards to Chinese culture, this is something that I'm 
on the front lines with, and I'm really trying to explore. There's so much being done to preserve the traditional style of playing, but there's not nearly enough work being done to give it a try. If the culture needs to grow and reach a wider audience, then there needs to be some form of innovation. So I work with artists here, um, especially some professional Gujang players, and just seeing what can be done with regards to creating a new style of playing. That, that's my biggest impression of Chinese culture is that there's, uh, you know, there's so much to be done, but there's also so much great work being done with the preservation of the old. So it's, uh, it's fascinating.